Here, can you just look in the mirror like we did and do your little exercises? And then try to pick a, a nice small mouth that you'd like to see on a cartoon. The next step is powdering and we powder our makeup because right now it's real sticky and it comes off on our clothes. But if we get some baby powder and a sports sock, just put the powder inside the sock, tie a little knot. This will set our makeup so we can wear it for 12 hours a day. And you're going to suck yourself Tilt in the face. Tilt back, you're shut your it. eyes, hold your breath. Ready? Okay. Go for it. So you're not even hitting yourself. Not at first. All the powder just flying on and then sticking onto the sticky yeah. part of the makeup. But uh, what you really want to do, you want to just dust off where you're going to put the next color, which would be the black. And you don't want to dust off very hard. Because yeah, you want this really powder to soak in for a little while to get all the way down to the pores. If it doesn't, then the white will fall off. I mean, it will fall fall off in big chunks. Line on all the way down here. When you do a line, uh, start in and go for broke. See, for some people, and I wipe think they don't know time. how much to put on the brush. Well, they just, they just run it back and forth and get it. If you wipe it off every time. Now, see, Tammy uses a... Yeah, what does she just use? I use a grease pencil. I'm... I prefer to use a pencil whenever I can. And this is just a soft crayon grease pencil. Actually, this is a, a lady's eyebrow pencil. Uh -huh. And if, if it's not quite soft enough, I just heat it up with a little lighter and apply a thin line. And the red you put on after you took off the white. Yes. But the blue here, you put on over the white. Yes, that's to tone it down. Uh, and then you powdered everything. Mm -hmm. Then you brushed off the powder. Yes. And then you put on the black. Yes, now a lot of people will, will br uh, powder after every color. After the white, uh -huh. after the red, after the black. So it's okay to eat and drink and make a bread? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good question because a lot of the... Uh, there's about 35,000 amateur clowns in the United States, and I've talked to some of them that say, Hey, I'm starving to death. Well, you know, I'd like to eat. And I said, why can't you eat? And they said, well, uh, we read that in a book someplace. And I said, who wrote the book? <laughs> they don't know. You know, well, the book was written by some guy maybe 20 years ago that... Uh, Didn't powder or something. Yeah, he could... said, don't powder, don't eat, uh, don't smile and show your teeth. Uh, or none of that stuff. Sure, you can eat. you got to yeah. eat and drink. We go to uh, fashionable balls at the Waldorf Astoria and we eat. And, and uh, you can smile and show your teeth. You know, you are... Uh, human beings and uh, if you're too regimentated kids get they don't like that well I like to use some little sequins to enhance my makeup and I use some comic lashes so I've got a little bottle of eyelash adhesive and I put just a little dot right where I want each, each stone star, to be huh? and it's going to be right at the base of each point point. Uh -huh. and then apply a little pressure and they stick just like that yeah I mean that quick mm-hmm it's great pretty, look at that pretty, pretty makeup clown. look at that that's a great and color pick up a that lot of light next come the <laughs> eyelashes. eyelashes that's Whoa. what's so special about being a clown because there's really no rules you can right. just be anything you want to be at the stones they have a, at a lot of fabric stores Fabric stores, hobby shops, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're like usually that. sold with little silver backs to go on a, a piece of fabric, right. but I just use them without, and they've got a little flat side, so. And do you get the eyelashes like the theatrical makeup stores? Uh -huh. I have makeup yeah. stores. Yeah. Now what are you doing, Frosty? What is that? Okay, this is the, what they call the classic look. And uh, when I was a little boy, I saw the first clown, he had a skull cap. They all had skull caps, and I said, I'm going to wear a skull cap someday. So. I wear a skull. This is called the classic, the classic look, the skull cap. I wear a different oh. nose than Frosty does. Frosty paints his nose on. I use a uh, little round rubber nose. And at Clown College, we all learn how to make noses. Ruthie mine made her rubber. very own nose. I so keep what? mine on with a little piece of very thin elastic. You can't even see the elastic from just about here. I it can't see. usually yeah. blends right in with my makeup. Yeah. And then I, I make my skull caps out of a... Uh, T-shirt knit, just white T-shirt knit, to keep all my hair up. 
one out of the way. Come on, let me see. Oh, so cute. <laughs> and then I have an orange yak hair wig. There's lots of things you can do for fun clown wigs. You can make one out of yarn. I prefer use a mop or something like that. A mop? That. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's all kinds of fun things. A lot of people sew feathers onto skull caps to make pretty clown wigs. Oh, that one's great. Isn't that nice? I like to wear a big hair bow. Little barrettes. So, Frosty, you don't wear a wig? No. And now what are you going to okay. do? Put the hat on. The famous cone hat. Whoa. Nice one. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. You. <laughs> Did you make your own hat, Frosty? Did you, you know, this yourself? We used to. We used to make our own hats, and uh, we used to take uh, felt hats, and we used to uh, like ordinary women felt hats, and we used to soak them in hot water. Okay. And uh, soak them for ten or fifteen minutes, and then stretch them over a broomstick. Mm -hmm. Stretch them as hard as we could, turn the ends up, let them dry on newspaper, and then cut them off to the desired length. But now they got. Such good felt that you can make them. The second category of clown makeup is the Auguste clown, and we have Jim Vogelsang. Yay! Hey! Go ahead, Jim. Go show, ahead. Oh, show us how you do it. Right, the Auguste makeup. Yes. Yeah. See, again, he starts with the white. With the lightest color. Lighter colors. Right. We'll find out if he uses a brush or not. Right. <laughs> Everybody finger paints in the circus, I've decided. It's <laughs> a lot of fun. So are you going to pat that white down? Uh, yes, but first of all, I need to uh, clean it up a little bit. I always find when I'm watching somebody do this on my face. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Go like this. It's like shaving in the morning. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> just gag, just gag. Usually you don't do this in your living room, too. Yeah, I'd highly recommend going outside or to another area where you're not going to get the powder all over the place. And you've got to watch it because it can get very slippery. So you're also using a shaving brush to take it off? Yes. Now, I don't know if Jim powders after every color or not. So far, he powdered after the first color. Uh, after uh, three out of four of them, I do. Uh, now we'll put on a base coat of uh, flesh color. You want to make sure that the flesh and the white connect every place. You can't leave uh, holes there. You don't ever want your own flesh to show through, right? Correct. Make sure it's smoothed out and not blotchy. Now, are you going to blend any colors in with that? Yes. The next okay. uh, color is the red. It's a, a darker color. We went from the white to the flesh to the red coming up. And I don't powder after this one because there are uh, places I have to blend the red in. Okay, now to highlight the cheeks, there's nothing there now. It's just sort of no man's land. So where I would smile, the cheeks pop out a little bit. So we put some color there. Now, it really doesn't need to powder the whole face, just the red where he just put on, but you're sweating. Well, I had the flushed, which was not powdered. Oh, right, either. right. But I don't powder the white because it had already been right. powdered. And brush off the excess powder again. You've seen that before. And make sure you powder good because if you don't, if you miss a spot and you start brushing it off, then you start brushing wet colors across your face. Look out below then. Powdering is so important to a, a real, clean, good-looking clown makeup. Now, this is the basic design, but it's incomplete. You need to outline it with uh, black. So he also uses a black eyebrow pencil. Right. I want a, a thin, neat line around this mouth.
He's, in the, he's like me, again, he studies one hand with the other hand. If you can just keep it simple, you'd be in great shape. Yeah. I think that's a good key to clowning in general, is, is keeping it simple. I like this is the hardest part for me to get the makeup on correctly. Right in close to your eyes, right? On the, yeah, on the left eye. You can do it, Jim. Yeah. yeah. Drum roll. I should close my eyes and go to it. Uh, this is a surgical appliance adhesive. Uh, it works best for me. Uh, it uh, it affects some people's skin, uh, but uh, mine it works a lot better than uh, cert uh, than latex or the uh, spirit gum. And I'm putting a rubber nose on, but I also put some red on the bottom of my nose so that if my nose comes off, there's still something there to represent a nose instead of just a hole in the middle of my face. Now, why do you choose to use the latex as opposed to a, uh, an elastic? Uh, I thought it made it, gave it a more complete look. Uh, yeah, the string won't break, because uh, there isn't any string. Uh, it's uh, more natural, not something that's put onto your face. It's a part of your face. It doesn't take long for that to stay on. And uh, voila! We wear a wig cap, uh, something to keep your own natural hair tucked out of the way and give a good fit to the wig. Uh, you want all your natural hair out of the way because if uh, somebody sees it uh, peeking out from underneath the wig, they say, hey, you're not a real clown. Well, yes, we are. We're as real as they come. There's a hairpin. And, uh, and the finishing that. touch is a top hat. There you go. And Jim, uh, you can see he even exaggerates the length of his face with his hat, too, just yes. to make it even longer. I think that's great. Correct. What a clown! Uh -huh. You're terrific. Wow. And the third category of clown makeup is the character. And to demonstrate that for you is Scott Linker. <laughs> Scott, please show everybody exactly how you put your clown makeup on. Start with a little spirit gum, because I use nose putty. This is a good year for spirit. You put your nose on first? Yes. Really? It's, it's, uh, I never saw any base. clown put their, their nose on first. With nose putty, it's really important because uh, you later use the makeup to actually blend the nose in. As I'll show you. Scott, why would anybody want to shape their nose it's every a, day instead of just getting a rubber, a rubber nose and putting it on? This is a lot more trouble, you're right about that. And for most clowns, it's really not necessary. For a character clown, and not every character clown, of course, because um, everyone is different, it, it blends in so well with the features. And with a character clown makeup, what you seek to do is exaggerate reality. So right. I take a big nose and make it bigger. And you can put the makeup on, obviously, right on the top of the putty. Uh-huh. I never realized how much red you put on your face. Because this is more of a precision line, it is is an extension above my eyebrow, not actually using some of the lines in my face. Mm -hmm. I need to give myself a little help. So that's when I use a pencil and later on a brush. Nobody's beard just stops in a line. It sort of fans out. That's what I'm doing here. It's just an exaggeration. 